This is Kyle Martin Paintings. I've been reading a book and it's a biography of the painter Grant Wood who was a fellow Midwestern landscape and portrait painter. You've all heard of Grant Wood and I'm doing a little bit of a deeper dive into his life and his art making by reading his book and I've gotten to the point in the book where he is painting his kind of fantastical views of the Iowa landscape. And it really got me thinking about the rolling hills and what they mean to me. And this morning I wanted to get outside and do a little painting of some of the rolling hills in my own neck of the woods. So I'm out here in the hills outside of Plain, Wisconsin. And we've got quite the vista behind me. I've got some lovely atmospheric perspective this morning. I'm really attracted by this scene. So there's this white barn down there on the other side of the cornfield. I noticed the rows of corn. The corn is not mature yet. It's only been planted three or four weeks ago. So there's just these lines of, of neon green corn going back, pulling you towards that barn. And then we have this valley and this vista. I love the atmospheric conditions and I love the atmospheric perspective of those faraway bluffs back there, those little hills. And so I'm gonna try and squish the scene together. I'm gonna try and pull the barn this way and so I can capture both those rows of corn that were so attractive to me and also those atmospheric hills in the background. So we'll see how I can accomplish that. It's always something, isn't it? All right, let's, let's start this painting. As we look out on the scene that I'm gonna to paint today, you can see some layers of atmospheric perspective happening. One layer is this sort of bluff or hill that's right behind the barn. We'll just say that that's the closest mass of trees to us that's in the composition. Then as we travel back, there's this secondary layer of atmospheric perspective. And then finally, there's this little piece of a hill that's very far off in the distance. It's back there down the road in the valley. There's veils of atmosphere between us and the subject matter. You can almost think about it like it is a curtain or sheets. If you pretended every 10 feet there was a very thin and translucent curtain, it's easy to see that the information, in this case the hills that are closer to us, would be more their local color, their natural colors of the trees, and as things move back in the distance, they would become veiled by that atmosphere. For me, it's always worthwhile to do some work on the palette before I get started. It helps me capture the scene that I'm seeing with its atmospheric perspective. And so here's what I've done on the palette. This is the lit up and the shadow side of that very front mass of trees on that hill and then here's the middle here's the lit part of the middle and the shadow part of that middle distance mass of trees on the hill and here's that far off bluff in the background here's the lights and here's the shadows so the closer they are to us the more they are true green and the further that they go back the more the atmospheric perspective influences the color and the more they become influenced by the color of the sky and the atmosphere. It's different in every situation, but that's what we have present in today's painting, and so we're gonna get started on the canvas. John Carlson wrote the book on landscape painting. Literally, it's called Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting, and it's a great resource for learning more about atmospheric perspective. His theory on atmospheric perspective, or aerial perspective as he states it, indicates that yellow is the first color to lose intensity and value as it travels back in the distance. So in this case, as the valley progresses into the background, the hills and the trees on top of the hills lose their yellow content 
and red will take on a lavender or purplish tone. That's why we get the saying Purple Mountain Majesty. And blue is really the color that will remain as things progress backwards. I don't think that you'd want to just paint everything blue. You want to just observe what is happening in the actual landscape that you're seeing. In this case of today's painting, I saw a lot of greens and blues in that background bluff. And yellow is definitely the color that was lost as the background hills went further back into space. I've been painting today for two hours and it's time for me to wrap up today's session. I spoke to a couple of family members whose family farm this is and it, it's cool to hear one, one uh, the young guy that I talked to, his name is Curtis Lack and he told me that the family has started farming again and I asked him how many cows he was milking and he said just under 50. And so that's a nice size operation but that's something that's manageable so you don't have to have all kind of employees all over the place. Although I don't know, I don't really know their whole situation, but I know that once you get into milking 100 plus cows, 120 cows, 150 cows, then things start to kind of change on the family farm and you need to start renting land all over the place and you need to do a lot of things to keep those milk checks rolling in. Uh, speaking of milk checks, we got the Holstein cows over there on the low ridge. You can see them as they're grazing back there now and I've got the little farm and the field coming out and also I've placed my my sort of up close trees my middle value trees and then my far off trees so I have a good indication of that atmospheric perspective and we'll talk more about this tomorrow when I come back and finish up there's going to be a whole lot more color happening there's going to be a lot more atmosphere added but as far as getting the painting started, this is what I wanted to do this morning. And so I'm going to have lunch, but we'll be back to finish this up in the morning. All right, good morning. We're back out here in the field. And tomorrow is the first day of summer. Indeed, you can see that the crops are starting to grow out in the farmer's fields. I can tell you it's hot and muggy out here. I think the high today is going to border right around 90 degrees. We've got that summer feeling happening out here. And with that heat and the humidity and the young crops growing down in the field, it's just got that summer feeling. And this morning we're gonna finish up this landscape painting and we're gonna get a little bit of that summer feeling happening in the painting as well. See that hill out there that I've painted orange. I, I underpainted it with that orange color just so that some of that rich and fertile soil in that farmer's pasture can peek through the green grass that'll be on top of it. We've got our little cows grazing out there and of course we've got our little white barn in the valley out here. It's a beautiful place to paint. I'm happy to be here. Let's finish this one off. It's too bad that it's hard to see what's happening on the painting right now and I will say that I was standing in some deep shade and the morning that I was painting this, I couldn't see the canvas that well either. However, it's a lot better to be painting in the shade than it is in full sunlight. If you paint in full sunlight, your colors seem brighter and lighter in value than they actually are. So when you bring it inside, the colors are actually much darker and muddier than when you thought. To contrast that, and in today's situation, I'm painting in the shadow and so when I brought the painting inside the colors were rich and bright and light in value and they had that sparkle of outdoor light. Here you can see it a little bit better after I moved my easel. And that's sometimes what happens is that I'll get the painting going on and I will move the easel around as I'm painting just because the sun is always moving and I have to work in the most comfortable conditions as possible. Well, I spent two hours working out here and I've just put my final marks onto the canvas. I think you can see a big change in what happened today. I loaded the, the canvas with another layer of paint. And I left a lot of 
the underpainting showing through in all of the areas just to create that sparkle of morning light. This morning when I woke up and I looked outside my own window onto the cornfield, I noticed a lot of sparkle and a lot of light. And that led me to want to focus on a broken color technique this morning. Here's that atmosphere as the valley moves back in space. You can see that the hills become much more blue and they're just transformed by that quality of atmosphere. And I'm happy with how those hills came out in this piece. Um, sure, I could come back three or four more days and develop this further and further and really nail down that feeling of atmosphere. But I think that there's a fun summer feel to this painting and a freshness that I don't want to lose. And so I'm going to call it done. And I appreciate you being here for this painting. I hope you enjoyed our discussion of atmosphere and atmospheric perspective. Uh, we're going to have a lot more conversations like that over the summer. So we'll see you on the next one. Hey, be well, everyone. This was a fun video to make, and I'm glad you were here for it. We'll see you all next week.